Hello, welcome to today's class. This is Rabi Ashi from ECC Lab Learning. Okay, welcome to this session. Uh, before moving on to our last syllabus area, which is basically a formation for comparison, how we are actually going to do the performance measurement based whether they have, we have achieved our targets or not, how were the variances, okay, the difference between budget and actual, okay, how is our performance with respect to the industry average with respect to the comparators, with respect to the past year result, or with respect to the budget, whether we have achieved it or not. Okay, now we're going to talk about how, uh, how our performance have been uh, this year around. So before moving on to that chapter, which is basically in Kaplan book, it is chapter number 19, Information for Comparison. There was one last topic which was left in the cash management area, which is basically inflation. And uh, the measure of inflation, how you measure inflation is with the help of index number. Okay, what is index number? Okay, there are two kind of indexes that we measure. Okay, one is the price index and the other one is the quantity index. Okay, for example, uh, we bought a chocolate in 2008 and it costs you like $80, okay? Now you're going to buy, now it's 2020. And now if you want to buy the chocolate, okay, it costs you 120, okay? Uh, with the passage of time, this uh, concept of inflation, with the passage of time, the, the, the time value of money, the purchasing power of money actually decreases. Okay, what you could buy for $1.10, you maybe you won't be able to buy it uh, after some time, after a year or so, after 10 years, after five years, definitely the money value would decrease. Okay, that's the concept of inflation. Okay, and how you measure the change in the price over time, or change in any, any variable that you measure with the help of index, okay? So what I believe that the index, what is going to be an increase uh, in the price of this chocolate that I bought for dollar eighty in 2008, what would be mm, the index? So considering 2008 as your base year, okay? And from here, I want to check the increase in the price, so the formula is P1 over P0. Okay, how you calculate the price index over 100, what is basically the increase in the index is uh, going to tell you the, which is the measure of inflation. So how you do that, 120 divided by 80, it is actually into 100, into 100, it's gonna, tell you the percentage increase in the price, okay, over the base, which is 100%. So it's going to be 120 divided by 80 into 100. So the index is 150%. That means this is 150% and it was 100%. So what is basically the increase in the price over the matter of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, or over the time of 12, 12 years, what is basically the increase in the price? That, that's basically 50%. Okay, that is because of the, uh, the re reduction in the purchasing power, okay, uh, due to inflation. So inflation is a process whereby the price of commodities steadily rise over time. The result of inflation is that a given sum of money will buy fewer and fewer goods over time. Okay, maybe I could buy uh, uh, two chocolates at about 120 now, but I won't be able to buy the same amount of chocolate after 12 years, definitely because of the increase in the prices, I would be able to buy less in quantity. Okay, so in periods of square inflation, prices rise takes place at an increasing rate. Okay, it depends upon the company's economy. Okay. This makes it very difficult for government businesses and individuals. How is forecasting get, get affected with inflation? Because maybe we cannot actually uh, predict what is going to be the inflation rate and then adjust our revenues and cost according to that. And then won't be able to 
uh, accurately forecast a cash flows on the base based based upon that so that uh, when uh, the inflation rate is not constant or uh, then we uh, most likely uh, we are not able to accurately forecast it it our cash flow statement definitely gets affected as, as a result of that so uh, when uh, the inflation rate is predictable then we actually can uh, can actually forecast our cash inflows and outflows but when it's unpredictable when it's irregular uh, and uh, undesirable and it's a high rate of inflation that that means that it definitely definitely affects your economic growth at the same time okay inflation is when too much uh, there's too much of money supply in the economy okay uh, because <clears throat> inflation is when too much money is chasing too few goods we all have money there's a lot of money supply in the economy but the goods are not uh, the supply is not a lot there's a lot of demand for the good but the supply is not a lot okay when that that's when there's too much the money supply in the economy too much money is chasing too few goods that's actually inflation so how government try to reduce the impact of inflation what it does maybe it would just to, to attract uh, the money to stop the money supply in the economy uh, government would uh, encourage uh, uh, the companies consumers everybody to just do the savings okay do the investment uh, maybe uh, put maybe do the investment with the bank or with the government okay buy the bonds and all that so that too much money supply in the economy is actually uh, is reduced and then the effect of inflation and the uh, price rise price high price high would be could actually be reduced so how they attract the investment okay in order to reduce that money supply in the economy maybe they would increase the interest rate so that uh, maybe uh, uh, discount rate would be increased uh, just to attract the investors so that they can invest in the bank they would put the money in the bank instead of spending it because more you spend and the uh, lesser the goods in the market definitely the price would increase okay so that that's actually the inflation too much money supply in the economy and too much money is chasing few too few goods okay there's also index number this is the price index there's also a quantity index okay quantity index uh, quantity in the uh, in the current year divided by quantity in the base year p1 is basically the current year value whether it's price index or the quantity index p not not uh, is don't uh, is for the base year in 200 and that's how you're going to measure the quantity index okay uh, the the you guys are familiar with the uh, retail price index consider i i i went for shopping okay and i had a couple of things in my cart okay maybe i got flour i got oil i got sugar i got a packet of tea and i'm buying it here at 2008 okay and if we, i would want to measure the effect of inflation i go shopping again and in, in my cart i put the same thing right there because here the quantity won't change if i had a packet of 5 5 kg flour it's definitely going to be 5 kg again that i'm buying here in 2020 so this was just uh, the increase in price for one item but we can actually calculate the increase in the price for all the for our actually our basket okay for all all our basket mm -hmm. for all the Uh, so uh keeping the quantity constant i am again going to pick uh, the oil the sugar this in the same quantity in tea pack in the same quantity that i picked in 2008 and now i'm going to measure the effect of inflation for example it was the base year it was always going to be 100% because this is the base year from where i am actually measuring the increase or decrease in, uh, measuring the impact of increase and decrease in the prices of the basket okay so it's actually going to be for every base year whatever is the year 
from where you are actually going to measure the increase. So that uh, is going to be 100%. So now if it was 125%, that means the inflation of that basket, keeping the quantity constant, it actually was 25%. So this was the, for the food only. Companies also uh, want to calculate uh, uh, this, uh, this an index known as a retail price index, okay? We are pretty much aware of that, but that actually doesn't really uh, measure the increase in the prices of just the food that we spend on, but other factors that actually constitutes a cost of living, which is basically majorly, you have to spend on food accommodation, and uh, the next we have to spend on uh, like medicine, like uh, a fuel cost, motoring, okay? So uh, if we actually measure the increase in all these factors, like housing, motoring, food, okay? Uh, so the increase in all those uh, over time, uh, all those things over time, all those goods and services that we consume and we uh, pretty much spend a lot on them, that actually um, gives you the measure of inflation. And the retail price index is basically a measure of inflation that actually tells you how much are these increase in the accommodation costs, which is actually constitute a cost of living, motoring, uh, this commute cost is also a major cost, food, okay, over time. So it actually measures the impact of inflation. For example, uh, the, the inflation rate or retail price index was 10%. That means 50,000 worth of purchases last year will on average cost 55,000 this year, okay? If you're going to measure the impact of inflation, 10%, that means you just increase the cost by 10%. That means you just multiply, take 10% of it, you just add it into that value or just take uh, like, uh, you know, what is 10%. 10 divided by 100, that is 0.1, and over the base value of 1.1. So just increase, multiply this 50,000 by 1.1, and you're actually going to get uh, for the next year uh, the cost of purchases. So that's all while making the budget as well, the revenue or all the cost. Um, if we are given the inflation rate, we can actually uh, inflate our revenues and the cost just to uh, take that factor into account. And for the next year, if uh, the rate is going to be constant, uh, it's going to be 6,500 next year and uh, so on, okay? So just compounding goes on like this. Yeah, keep on doing and you, you actually be able to calculate for all uh, the years, the price for all years. So that's how the inflation effects are. So moving on to the, the last chapter, information for comparison. Okay. How you actually measure the performance. Okay, performance. What is basically performance? Okay, you set your targets, you set your long-term targets, okay? You set a goal, goal comes out of your mission, what you want to achieve and mission there's a long-term vision that you have produced for like 30 years, what you want to do. And out of that, in the short term, what you want to achieve is basically the mission, uh, mission, what you want to achieve in the short term. And uh, what is the purpose of the company? What are the customers of the markets? Uh, what are the values of all of these uh, factors, the uh, three to four things that constitute what actually constitute the company strategy, okay? What actually constitute the mission? But it doesn't really tell you any quantitative goals that whether I want to increase my revenue by 30% or reduce my cost by 50%, increase my market share, nothing like that comes in your mission statement. And also your goal is also very general to what you want to achieve. So the primary goal of any profit seeking organization is to maximize the shareholder well, okay, just to how they would be happy if the share price is increasing. Definitely they would be happy if they, there's a dividend growth that they're expecting out of their investment, then they would be happy. But if there, there's no dividend growth and if the share price keeps on decreasing, they, they might share, uh, uh, sell, sell their shares, okay? They won't be interested 
uh, in investing into that company if, if they don't if they're not getting the return required return out of it so the primary com goal of any profit seeking organization is basically to uh, maximize shareholder for any profit seeking organization there are other not for profit seeking organization like charitable donations though those doesn't really work for uh, shareholder wealth maximization they are there for a cause maybe they're working for education or maybe they're working for earthquake uh, they would maybe they're working for gender uh, for the rights of the women or children okay they're working there for a cause okay the donors who just uh, put their money into the uh, into the charities and then they just want the things uh, to be done uh, by the guardians of the the money okay uh, guardians are basically uh, the management who is actually running the charitable organizations okay so uh, they don't have any profit seeking uh, objectives so, but for profit-seeking organization, shareholder wealth maximization is what they're looking for, okay? Uh, so how, moving on to profit-seeking organization, to how to actually maximize the shareholder wealth, they set their long-term targets, okay? Uh, the, which is basically part of, done by the senior management, which is known as strategic planning. And from the long-term targets, uh, you set, set your budgets. Budget is basically comprised of uh, one to three years and the long-term targets, which is known as strategic planning, okay? It comprises of could be three, five, and seven years, okay? And uh, the medium-term planning, which is done by the technical management, okay? Which, are, which is done by all the managers, okay? They're going to make their own budget, like sales manager is going to make their own budget, like a sales budget, production budget, uh, all functional managers are going to make their own budgets and then they get the things done by the operational management, which is the lower most. So there are three levels of management like that, okay? And they set their targets at each level, okay? There may be technical plans, there may be, uh, which is a budget basically, there may be uh, short-term plans, medium uh, operational planning, maybe could be daily, weekly, hourly, monthly, okay? Less than one year planning is known as operational plan. Less than one year planning, okay? So now there are certain critical success factors that you need to understand what they really are. Critical success factors. What are critical success factors? Critical success factors are the factors that ensure the success of an organization, which is very important for the success of an organization, which is basically one could be the profitability. Above, above all, definitely, definitely. And that's the profitability. The other one could be liquidity. If the company doesn't have cash, definitely uh, the survival of the uh, business would be questionable. So another one is uh, liquidity. Then quality, some, it could include some non-financial factors as well. Quality is really important, really important. If a customer uh, is buying your product and he thinks it's not, uh, value for money or it's uh, didn't meet its requirement or it was too it was not worth the price definitely he won't buy it again okay if this he bought a shoe and shoe wasn't comfortable if he bought a leather, leather bag it was, it was so pricey but uh, it didn't last long if uh, he, he bought a perfume he thinks it's not long lasting definitely he's not going to buy it again if you booked for, for any tuition center and think they, they don't provide quality for the money. Definitely you won't recommend the others and you won't book with that institute, with that tutor again. Definitely. So that's where the quality is. It's very critical for the success of an organization. Company may be profitable, may have enough liquidity. There's no deficit. There's plenty of surplus available, but, but the quality is suffering. Somewhere uh, customers are not satisfied. It is impacting customer satisfaction as well. Uh, customer retention is a question and they're, they're not repeat customers and you're regularly receiving complaints. Definitely the long-term survival of the company is going to affect with that, okay? And also, so the critical success factors could, could be financial as well as non-financial. Like these, uh, these could be measured in the financial terms, okay? But these are, what I'm talking about is are non-financial. 
if the company is not flexible flexibility is three things okay flexibility is speed of delivery if you went to a workshop and it's taking so long they told you that the car would be ready in two hours and it took a whole day or maybe two or three that means there's a delay in the work when there's there'll be a delay in the work customer won't be happy that again is going to affect the customers and quality and everything so flexibility is basically speed of delivery you're in a queue a long waiting list whether you're in hospital uh, waiting for a doctor or you are in a queue uh, of, a, of of a restaurant okay or maybe you are in a queue of for any maybe, maybe in any public office like passport office okay it's taking long that means uh, the speed they're not speedy they're not good maybe the staff is less or maybe the staff is not trained so they're taking so long okay so when uh, how you actually measure the speed of delivery, the time taken per job, yeah. Time taken per job, time taken per order, okay. That actually tells you the how speedy they are, that, that's flexibility. So speed of delivery. Coping with demand is again flexibility. Coping with demand, okay. I asked, I ordered 500 desks and they said they can only deliver 400. Definitely I won't book with them again because I think they're not flexible, okay? They're not able to meet my demands, yeah? So it could be, uh, again, that that's flexibility. And the third thing is meeting customer requirements. Yeah, I told you it's really important, meeting customer requirements. I went to a restaurant and asked for a chicken sandwich. They said only beef is available. That means they're not meeting my customer demands okay i went to uh i am looking for certain specifications okay uh, and I probably want to make my laptop done or okay uh, I, I am i am filling up the form online and i want certain hardest capacity and everything i want certain specifications and it's not uh, i'm not given those options that means i think they're not able to meet my demand so that yet again, so all these factors are, so not only financial factors are important, the non-financial factors are equally important for the long-term survival of the company. So all these factors are very critical for the success of an organization, okay? How you actually measure that, uh, that these factors, that you are actually able to, uh, perform well and uh, definitely the, all these critical success factors you're going to set your targets for okay maybe you will be setting your profitability targets okay all of uh, the liquidity targets and the quality targets and all these targets you'll be setting and then you how you would measure that the, those factors those targets have actually been achieved definitely when i'm not going to measure that whether your targets have been achieved or not Car targets are objectives are always measurable. I, I told you uh, objectives are smart, should be smart. Okay, it should be specific that how you're going to achieve that long term goal. Okay, that is shareholder wealth maximization. Okay, it should be specific. Increase revenue by 10%. Okay, it should be measurable. 10% that means whether you have increased the revenue by 10%, I could actually measure it. So objectives are measurable, attainable, realistic, time bounded. And, and how many times? In three years, in one year. Eh? and uh, achieve this amount of target in a month, okay? Uh, achieve this kind of productivity in an hour. So it has to be time bounded at the same time, whether it, whatever level it is, strategic level, technical level, or it is the operational level, the targets should be measurable. So what are those factors that are actually gonna ensure that I've achieved these critical success factors and uh, I'm a successful organization? I am going to measure those targets. So what are those targets or the ratios, okay? That I'm actually going to calculate to ensure whether those targets or objectives have been met or not are known as key performance. My KPI is key performance indicators. Just like critical for success factors are financial as well as non-financial. So the KPIs would be financial performance indicators and also non-financial performance indicators okay financial performance indicators as well as non-financial performance p for performance i for indicators okay so performance talking about the performance how well 
uh, I have performed, definitely I'll be looking into my performance. Performance figures are doesn't really perform uh, give me any information. Standalone, it doesn't really uh, give me any information. For example, one of uh, the target was profitability. And how you measure profitability, you set your targets as uh, uh, how you measure profitability, that how much the profit was as a percentage of your sales. Definitely, there's one terminology known as gross profit margin. So gross profit margin is a financial KPI that actually measures that critical success factor, which is profitability. Okay, so gross profit margin could be there. Okay, and then for what measure liquidity, current ratio. Okay, I'm going to talk about what it really is. Okay, and all these factors, quality, customer feedback, how I'm going to measure the quality customer questionnaires, customer feedback, whenever even you're riding from Uber, then you get how uh, rate the driver or something like that. That's the quick feedback you instantly take from the uh, right at the point of consumption of the services right away. You can, uh, after eating, they, uh, McDonald's would come and bring a tablet for you to just rate our services level or you fill up a questionnaire. That's this, that's that's actually how you get or how uh, that actually measures uh, your performance indicators of quality, which is like customer questionnaires, customer feedback, okay? And customer satisfaction, how you know that the customer is satisfied, like a percentage of repeat customers as a percentage of total customers are actually gonna tell me that, yeah, customers are happy, then only they're going to uh, come to my restaurant again, come to my salon again, come to my hospital again, yeah. They rebook the ticket with me again, if I'm an airline company. So, and flexibility could be the KPI for flexibility. I'm just writing one of the KPIs for each of these targets, which are basically critical success factors. How are you going to measure the flexibility? I told you the time taken per job could tell me time taken per job or on time deliveries. Okay. On time, percentage on time delivery, like 90%. My on time delivery is 90%. That means 10% have been delayed, 90% were on time. Okay. If any airline just want to check uh, their on time uh, arrival, okay, at their destination and uh, they get a score of, for example, 95%, that means 95% of the time they have been, they have been, 95% is what they have been on time, and only 5% they were not able to uh, make it on time. So that's uh, the measure of flexibility. So performance figure standalone doesn't really give you any idea unless you compare it performance with that of your budget, your target, okay? or your last year result. Or your corresponding period result. For example, December should be measured with last year December because of seasonal variations, okay? Uh, it's uh, near the Christmas time. So the, uh, the, uh, you need to measure, compare the figures with last year corresponding uh, period figures, okay? And so performance figure, my gross profit margin was 30%. So standalone is not going to give me any information unless I compare it with budget. Then only I'm going to uh, get an idea whether I was able to achieve it or not. So for example, my gross profit margin was 30%. Then I'm going to compare it with my budget. And then I'm going to compare it with my last year result. Then I'm going to compare it with my competitor and how well my competitor was performing. Then I'm going to compare it with industry average. Definitely there'll be some industry data where all the data for all the participants in the industry would be submitting their result and hence will form an industry figures for comparison. So in order to assess your performance at how well your performance have been with regards to all the critical success factors and what are your key performance indicators are telling you whether you have achieved your budget or not, or whether you have achieved your targets or not, you need to compare them with that of the budget or last year result, the competitors or industry average. Last competitors. 
industry average then only you're going to get the whether the, you have uh, uh, whether 30 percent was good or not okay for example whether you have uh, for example if you have uh, uh, got max uh, for example you got 56 out of 100 okay then definitely you're going to, it actually gives you the how much you have uh, you couldn't earn out of 100 it was a comparison out of 100 and then you're going to compare your marks with that of maybe your friends with that of your class fellows and then you're going to uh, maybe match your result with another student uh, uh, who was taught in another institute and then you're going to maybe you're going to measure your result what was the overall global pass rates yeah globally you're going to measure and then you're going to assess your performance at how well you have achieved whether your marks good or not okay so standalone performance figures doesn't really give you any idea until and unless you compare it with anything so 30 percent whether it was good or not i then compare it with my budget for example my budget was 35 percent that means i wasn't able to earn the gross profit margin which was required in the budget maybe my production cost was too much maybe my sales were less that i wasn't able to achieve my target of 35 percent so last year i achieved a target of 40 percent oh this time i was 10 percent short and my competitor was like 38 at 38 percent oh definitely i'm lacking i'm behind by eight percent and the industry was also at 33 percent industry average so that means my performance wasn't really good in that budget period or, uh, or for example, if my gross profit was 30% and uh, okay, and now, for example, if my gross profit was, for example, uh, my gross profit was 40%, okay, and I am going to compare it to my budget. Budget was 35%. Okay, that target has been met. Last year it was 40%. So I'm just uh, in line with the, my last year result. And my competitor was only able to get 38%. So I was at 40%. And my industry was at 33%. That means I got 40%. That means my performance was well ahead of industry average competitor in line with last year result and above I have achieved above the budget. That means your performance was pretty good. And then we also know that uh, what is the flex budget, how you, why you prepare flex budget. In order to compare your actual result with that of budget, that also tells you how your performance was, okay? So uh, comparison of actual result with that of your estimated cost and revenues for actual activity level, that what should have been for the actual activity level estimated cost and revenues at actual activity level you actually then you compare your actual result with in order to calculate the variance which is actually going to be a like with like comparison for example you prepare your fixed budget and it was at an activity level of thousand however actually you only produce 800 units so now you're going to revise your uh, standards to compare with the actual in order to get how well ahead or behind you were and whether the variance was favorable or adverse so you're actually going to flex your costs so cost that changes with the activity level you're actually going to flex the variable cost but the cost which remains constant is actually going to be the same as that of the fixed budget activity level so material labor we know it's a uh, uh, it's a variable cost, okay, and production overhead, usually it's a semi-variable cost. So then we're going to apply the high-low method, okay, and we're going to flex the variable portion, but we're not going to flex the fixed portion of a semi-variable cost, which is of a y equals a plus bx. So this is not going to be flexed, but this is going to uh, change. So the variable portion is going to change. So that's how we're going to set our estimated cost at actual and then compare it with the actual result and then calculate the variance. So for example, the admin cost is totally fixed. So it's not going to change and it's going to be the same as that of the fixed budget. For example, it was 10,000. So here again, it's going to be 10,000. Material, we're going to calculate the cost per unit. For example, the standard cost per unit was two. Then we're going to compare it, estimated cost per unit into actual units. What is what should have been the cost for 800 units. So 
the flex budget says that it was, should have been 1600. So should take, as a comparison of should take versus did take, okay? That gives you the comparison, which is like with like comparison. Okay, so uh, earlier at a fixed budget, it gives you the allowance for the actual, uh, the budgeted activity level and it was 2000. Definitely, I couldn't, uh, couldn't compare, definitely I couldn't compare the cost of material for 1000 unit with that of uh, the cost at 200, 800 units. Definitely, I had to flex it. So what I flex it is the variable cost I flex and fixed cost I don't flex unless there is any change in the fixed cost given in the, then I'm going to change it. If there's, a, for example, after a certain activity level, there's, a, there's an increment in the fixed cost, there's a step fixed cost, then I'm going to adjust it as well. Otherwise, I'm going to consider that my fixed cost, I'm not going to flex it and my fixed cost is going to be constant, just like my variable cost per unit remains constant. Uh, but if my variable cost per unit is also changing, like uh, at higher activity level, I may be getting some discounts. So I'm going to adjust that figure as well. Or maybe at, after a certain time period, there, there might be increase in the variable cost as well due to inflation. I'm going to adjust those figures. So unless there's not uh, given any change regarding these constant, I'm not going to flex it. Okay. And I'm going to uh, consider that those factors are constant. What I'm going to flex the cost, which is a variable cost that actually increases if, so if activity level changes, just like here from 1000, it changed to 800. So I'm actually going to flex the cost, which is a variable cost. And in a semi variable cost, I'm going to flex the variable portion and not going to change the fixed portion. And for example, admin was fixed cost. And it's going to be same as that for thousand units, the standard for 800 unit, it won't change because fixed cost is a cost that doesn't change with that of the activity level. And the variable cost is a cost that actually changes with the activity level. So, and for example, the variable cost was eight per unit and for 800 units, the standard allowance for actual activity level like should take was eight into 800. <clears throat> so it was 6,400. So for example, my actual material cost was 2000. That means here, what is my variance? My variance is here is uh, 400 adverse. So here 6,400, actual I took 6,500. So here my variance is also 100 adverse. That means I haven't achieved my budget. When you're Variance is Edward, that means you haven't achieved your budget, could have controlled your cost, your cost control wasn't good. Here my admin cost uh, standard was 10,000. Actual I consumed 8,000. So 2,000, my budget was 2,000 here favorite. It was 2,000 favorite. So if I net off all of these, my flex budget target is actually if you want to learn uh, flex budget in detail, I already did a lecture on that. If it was just a review in the performance for comparison that this is basically giving you uh, performance that how are your net variances, whether it's a positive or it's a negative. Negative means you haven't achieved your budget. Your actual profit is behind the budgeted profit. Okay, that, or your actual cost was more than the budgeted cost. That's how you get a negative or an adverse variance. Okay. So my flex budget was 1600 plus 6400 flex production cost, if you say. The cost that should have been for actual 800 units, actual activity level was 18,000. But actually I incurred how much cost? 6500 plus 2000 plus 8000. I actually incurred a cost of 16500. So net my performance was good when compared with the budget. That's the how you're going to measure your actual result with that of your budgeted result in order to calculate your variance. In my next lecture, we're going to calculate the variances in detail. But this was uh, just to make you guys realize that how, what actually caused, could cause uh, uh, the variance, okay? It's actually the comparison of flex budget with that of the actual result. So here it was 1500 favorable. If I net off all of these as well, this is 500 adverse in 2000 favorable, that actually makes 1500 favorable. 
so i actually i was good with that so uh, what could cause that material variance of 400 adverse okay so uh, i need to investigate into this total variance and then unless i don't investigate it i don't really know what actually caused that was it the price which was i paid more than the standard or whether i used more in uh, in order to in in producing one unit maybe i used more kgs than that required by the standard maybe it was so two reasons could be behind that adverse material variance of 400 so i until unless so flex budget gives me the total variance it doesn't until unless i don't investigate what was the reason of the variance i can't really correct take any corrective action okay because uh, in the next period here i got the feedback uh, variance actually gives you the feedback so that uh, in future you're going to improve your performance okay and I, and until unless i don't really know the reasons of the variance i can't really take any corrective action Maybe I, uh, once I know that the price was the factor, so maybe I changed my supplier or something like that, or maybe uh, bargain on the price or something like that. Once I know it was the usage, maybe I could uh, train my employees. Maybe they're wasting more. That's why the uh, actual usage is more than the standard usage. Maybe standard usage was 8 kg. I actually, I'm using 10 kg, so usage variance was adverse. So until unless I don't know the reasons of the variance, I can't really take any corrective action. Okay, so could be price, could be usage. Okay, maybe uh, standards price was two, and uh, I I bought a material for eight. So maybe I uh, I change my supplier. Yeah, or bargain with the supplier, or maybe seek uh, alternative components. Maybe change the design, whatever. Maybe the usage standard usage was five kg. Maybe I am taking 8 kg, that's the reason. So I need to investigate for the, or in order to investigate the variance, I need to calculate my sub variance. So total material price variance, which is going to be flex material cost, less actual cost, that would give me the total variance. So in order to investigate what was the reason of the variance, I need to calculate whether the price was the reason or whether users were the reason. So material price variance need to be subdivided into total material variance need to be subdivided into material price variance and material usage variance. Until unless I don't do that, I can't really uh, improve my performance in the next period. And so is the case with labor. Okay, so is the case with labor. Uh, uh, hundred adverse. So whether it was more rate I paid as compared to the standard, maybe the standard rate said that pay five per hour, maybe I actually paid eight per hour. Maybe that was the reason. Or maybe labor took more time. Maybe labor wasn't efficient. It took more time than the standard. And on average, they were supposed to take eight hours and maybe they are taking three hours. So until unless I don't know the reasons of the variance, I can't take any corrective action in the next period. So my flex budget, which is gives me, which is basically the, uh, the total variance comes from, which is basically flex labor cost, less actual cost. And flex labor cost is standard labor cost per unit into actual units minus actual result. The total variance under, unless I don't dig, dig it down into its rate variance and an efficiency variance, I won't be able to take any corrective action. Maybe uh, my labor needs training. Maybe they are unskilled. That's why they're taking so long. That would affect my flexibility, speed of delivery, everything is well. Financial factors, uh, here financially, they're taking more time, more cost to the company, and the non-financial customers are also getting affected. Our, our deliveries are getting delayed. Maybe uh, our staff needs more training. Okay, maybe we need to hire skilled labor. Yeah, or the rate was the problem. Yeah, so uh, there could be interdependence in the variances as well, okay? Interdependence like you used a cheap material. Let's say you used a cheap material. Cheap material means maybe your price variance was favorable. The cheap material would be used more. There will be more wastage, yeah? When you're doing the dishwashing and you're using the cheap dishwasher, you might take it, it, it it's not working, you need more and more. Okay, I'm not talking about the automated dishwashing. 
you're doing it manually, you definitely you would use more material if it was cheap. Yeah, maybe the same thing is with the detergent. Yeah, same thing is with the soap. You're washing your hands and uh, there's not much lather in your hands. That means it's, it's a cheap quality. So it would be used more, definitely. Okay, if you're not using a good oil for your engine, definitely your engine performance won't be good. So cheap, price is favorable, but maybe usage would be adverse. This is kind of interdependence. So for example, if I'm using an expensive material, expensive material definitely off, would be pricey. Maybe it would cross the standard price limit and my variance would be adverse in that case price variance. But that would be used less. That would be useless, so material usage variance may be favorable. So if you see that one is favorable, the other one is adverse, then likely there's likely an interdependence between the variance. Most likely, it's that reason. Because once you know uh, what are the reasons for the variance, you are also going to think about whether there's an interdependence of the variance. That what could be the reason of adverse material usage variance? Could be whether I bought a cheap material, yeah? Same as it is with labor, interdependence of the variance. Like I, I hired a cheap labor because of that, uh, uh, the rate was two per hour and I was able to pay one per hour and I, hence I saved cost here. So my rate variance was favorable, but it would affect the efficiency. Definitely unskilled, they are unskilled, going to take more time. Yeah, maybe going to waste time as well. So they're going to take more time than the, that required. So uh, they were required to produce a unit in two hours. Maybe they're taking like four hours. Yeah. Wasting companies' resources. Yeah, that's we need to control. Control our cost. Efficiently, efficient utilization of resources, whether it's, whether it's the uh, utilization of machinery, whether utilization of labor, or whether it's uh, you know, like uh, uh, utilization of the material effectively, like with less wastage. That's what a manager needs to control and uh, that's what a management control system is all about. We need to control that not more money is spent. That's why you said the budget and that's why we want our actual result in line with our budgeted results. So maybe taking long, so efficiency variance is adverse. So it could be the other way around that I hired an expensive labor, a skilled one. So what happened here, the rate variance went adverse, but they took less time. Maybe instead of two hours, they were able to finish one unit in 1.5 hour, actually saved time. Yeah, saved cost for the company. So the efficiency variance was adverse, uh, favorable. So one is adverse, the other one is favorable, they can be likely interdependence of the variances. So the flex budget gives you a total variance under unless you don't break up the variance into its sub variances, you can't really improve uh, your performance, okay? So until unless you don't really know the reasons of the variance, uh, you don't investigate or you don't uh, see the interdependence of the variance, you can't really improve your performance or take any corrective action in the next week. So that's it from today's lesson. Thank you very much. We're going to discuss uh, in detail how these variances are calculated in our next lecture. And if you want to see the flex budget in detail, you can check the flex budget video. Thank you very much that we did in the uh, budgeting part. Thank you.